All right, guys. Uh, this is a very interesting time in MMA. I'd love to tell you the year, but I can't. I will tell you I'm very accurate to guess this is around 2005. So we're at Team Quest, the original Team Quest, uh, which at this point is a very famous gym. Uh, Gresham, Oregon. And in this video, you've got Evan Tanner. He's on bottom. He's sparring with Matt Lindland. But what's so interesting about this is Evan Tanner was the reigning world champion at 185 pounds. But Matt Lindland was the number one ranked 185 pound fighter in the world. So to say that again, so you don't have to rewind this. Yes, you heard that right. Evan Tanner was the champion, but Matt Lindland was the number one rank. To make things more dramatic, they were teammates. And here they are sparring. And so there's always this conversation amongst the media of who really was the best, the champ or the, the guy with the ranking. And at the gym, we knew the answer, and, and both guys knew the answer, but they never spoke on it. They were teammates. Matt didn't have any ego involved that Evan was given his opportunity and won the strap, and Evan didn't have any ego involved. I mean, they just were, were just a couple of hardworking teammates that, that followed the rules. Followed the rules of the practice room, right? The unwritten, what, what happens in the room stays in the room. But they allowed somebody to make this video. So here we are a decade plus later. And I'm going to speak on it because, you know, there's there's so many things that go on here. Matt Lemel was very interesting in his career while he was the number one ranked fighter in the world. And he was. The rankings had it right. He, he was the baddest man alive. You can see from his technique here, his wildness. You know, I'll call it wild. He's all over the place. This position right here, by example, he's making it up. I was at practice with Matt Lindland every day. We never worked out. Okay, now this, I know what you're thinking. That, that looks like he's setting up a straight arm bar. Yes, that's a little bit more technical. But the in-betweens, he was a roughhouser. I mean, Matt Lindland brought a, a desire and a will and a fight and a grit, a conditioning, an unorthodox. But that's what made him. That's what took him all the way to number one in the world. He was tough. He wanted it. He was mean. He was creative. But it was all just based on the fact that he was just out there fighting. Okay, you know, a little position. When I'm, I'm on my back. I'm, I'm going to go to this thing they call the guard so I can at least see the guy. I mean, he just had really rough concepts, really basic concepts of where to be. Okay, I'm on top of the guy. suppose I should start punching him from here. Oh, I'm on my feet. I suppose I should keep some pressure on him and try to either hit him or grab him. I mean, he had really rough concepts, really basic concepts. And then he just used hard. I mean, he was just a rough and tumble, give me the gloves and tell me when it's my turn guy. Evan, Evan shared some of those philosophies, but he was more technical. I don't know if Evan Tanner ever really got credit for how technical he was. He would spend a lot of time drilling. He would spend a lot of time with coaches. That was an interesting time in MMA.